Hi folks, let's map field data collected from a fitness app, RunKeeper, Strava, etc. This is for a course that I created and am teaching called Environmental GIS, but you could use these procedures elsewhere. I hope it's useful for many. In the particular course, we started with track points that I collected in California. I collected them in two ways. One as a line and one as points. So the line file has one record in it. The points file has, as you saw, 581 records in it. You can, of course, symbolize these in different ways. And notice that this is a very rugged, rugged area in California, largely along ridge top. Notice also that since I was in the shadow of the ridge on the east side of the ridge, that the spatial accuracy was compromised. You can see over here on the east side that I, it shows that I was actually off trail by about eight meters when I literally wasn't. That would have been way too steep and not good for the so soil erosion and control. So there's some accuracy issues that I want people to pay attention to. Also, the fact that you can use these pop-ups for, in my case, some photographs that I took in the field tied to a latitude and longitude location. You can anchor those as, I done, as I've done here, or you can have them as free-floating pop-ups. Pop-ups are also modifiable in ArcGIS Online. Okay, now the next step in this particular activity is to go to a certain CSV that I've got stored in, in this case, our learning management system in the course. So I select that file, I download that file, and I save it as a CSV. Another way to do it is open it in a learning management system, copy the text out, copy all this text out, making sure you don't put any extraneous characters in there, and paste it into a text edit or a notepad file, depending on whether you have a Mac or a PC, respectively. But the, the easiest way is just to download the whole file. Don't rename it, and make sure that your file extensions are on in your operating system so that you can see that it's truly a CSV. Sometimes operating systems try to rename the file for you, and you don't want that. So now the idea is you can save the map and give it some metadata. Now I've got to sign in here. Now I'm signed into my ArcGIS Online organizational subscription. So now I can save the file. But first of all, I want to add that layer that we've just downloaded. If I browse layers in the Add button on the left side of the map, all I can see are online sets of content. So what I want to do is add layer from file. And I'm going to point to the layer that I've just saved to my device. So I'm going to say your device, and I'm going to navigate to that folder, in my case, the downloads folder, where I have that CSV file saved. And now it's going to say, hey, do you want to cr create a hosted layer, a hosted feature lay layer, and add it to the map? Yes, because a hosted feature layer is powerful. It's like the Lego bricks in a structure, that you can do lots of things in it. You can share those Lego bricks or those layers with others. Notice that it's saying, okay, I recognize that it's latitude longitude because you can also map things on street address and on city country combinations and a couple of other ways. But here I've got latitude and longitude and I'm going to give it some metadata here. It's always a good idea to give it some metadata so that you can find your own data layer later and other people can find your data layers and maps as well. So it's important to pay attention at least somewhat to the metadata here. And we're giving it a bit of short shrift. I would spend more time with it if I was going to use this on into the future. This is for demonstration purposes, for instructional purposes, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time on here, but it's still good to put tags in a summary, as you can see. Now I'm going to create that layer and add it to the map. It's publishing it as a feature service and now creating the layer, and now it's going to add it to the map and zoom the map to the area where the data is located. Notice that it's at the University of Manchester, where I was for a geography education conference in England. Let's go ahead and go to bookmarks. If your bookmarks don't appear, go ahead and add those. Make sure you add Chaparral Hills and Manchester. Manchester, England and Chaparral Hills in California. Why don't I see my layers in Chaparral Hills? Well, because I turned them off before I went to the bookmarks. So let's go ahead and turn those back on and then go back to bookmarks. And then sure enough, there's the Chaparral Hills layers that I've collected in the field and also the one in Manchester. Okay, so far so good. We've got our feature service added to the map. Super. Let's go ahead and take a look at the table of data. Notice in this case, I've got 164 records. Now, it's always important when you're mapping to be critical of the data. Notice here I've got uh, three points that are much lower in elevation than the others, six meters or less above sea level. The other ones are 20 or 40 meters above sea level. So that stands out right away to me. If I select those in the table, 
it's they're going to be shown on the map so I can zero in I can zoom in to those layers or those those features in the layer I'm gonna to go to color and uh, color color and amounts counts and amounts and so now I can see that uh, the ones that are in dark blue are actually the ones that may be in error why would that be I'm gonna change the base map to streets so I can see this a little bit better it's hard to see these small points on an image so if I now zoom to an area where I've collected the data and I open the table and I select those three points let's go ahead and open that table once again I will see that the three points that are possibly error why uh, prone in terms of elevation are the ones that I collected right when I exited the building so those three points I'm going to select them here 0.8 meters and 6.3 now sure all of these points are actually low but I was definitely higher than just a half a meter above or 0.8 meters above sea level notice that it's right when I left that building and oftentimes your GPS on your phone or a regular GPS unit is trying to figure out where it is on the planet X and Y you might be within a few meters or so with a low-end GPS or just with your phone but the Z elevation is notoriously could be quite a bit off as it is here now for tracking my route it's no big deal but if I was laying fiber optic cable or a gas pipeline it would be a big deal so now I'm going to verify that against another source I'm going to go to ArcGIS online and look for world elevation G GMTED it's the global elevation imagery layer so I'm going to use that as a source to verify the elevations here it's a global set, set of data so when I add it it's going to give me just a green mass because it's a global data set the resolution is rather coarse but if I zoom out I indeed see lower elevations toward the Irish Sea and higher elevations toward the center of England toward the Lake District and the Peak District if some of you know where those beautiful parts of England are now if I want to see all things through there remember you've got styles and in styles if I scroll all the way down it's gonna take a little while to go all the way down through all the possible eleva elevations I can adjust the transparency so that I'm seeing the elevations through my field collected data now there's no rule here in terms of what the transparency should be just so that you can see the elevation as well as your field collected data now I'm gonna go back to bookmarks right and zoom to Manchester this is the advantage of having a bookmark now I can see my elevation and if I have my elevation layer as the top layer if I click I'm going to get the return on the elevation notice all 43 45 and 48 meters that confirms my suspicions that the first three points are compromised and, and wrong in terms of elevation so that was the purpose there verifying your data making sure that it's it meets your needs but also powerfully being able to add data from a table of data that's stored on your local device or a table of data that's online or ArcGIS online layers imagery feature services points lines and polygons satellite imagery drone imagery aircraft imagery raster layers of various kinds so you've got a lot of power at your fingertips within a short amount of time to map and understand your field data and of course we can map the data in terms of other th attributes as well if we had them right water quality tree species tree height a number of pieces of litter and so on now again I'm gonna save this map I'm gonna give it some metadata so that I can find it later and so other people can find it if I share it with others later on this is the metadata page give it tags a title and a summary again so you can find it and then also there's a sharing function do you want to share this if so who do you want to share it with and so on that's another consideration when you're working with web-based geographic information systems tools like ArcGIS Online like we've done here. I hope this has been helpful. Map on and keep on thinking spatially. Thanks.